Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the fourth episode of Calf Club Podcast, where if you don't have big calves, then what the fuck are you doing? I'm here with my guest, Chris. How's it going? You're a good friend of mine. I've known you since high school, man. And those calves. Oh. Huge. How did you get them so big? Squats. Twice a week, heavy as fuck. Yeah, your workout routine is like crazy, man. I, I saw you doing deadlifts and shit. I'm like, this guy has like four plates on like each side. I'm like, damn, yeah. son, where'd you find this? Yeah, it's, uh, it's addicting once you see the numbers start to climb and uh, it's yeah. a rabbit hole. With your workout routine, what are you trying to achieve? And what are you doing? What kind of exercises are you doing for those calves, bro? Oh. Specifically for the calves, six reps or six sets. <laughs> this guy has his leg fully, exta- <laughs> fully extended right now. His leg, we're examining his calves. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. I think having <laughs> strong calves is very important because it makes yeah. it look weird, right? You have like jacked quads and, and hamstrings, and then you look at this like skinny little like calf. It looks like shit, right? Yeah, little chicken legs. Are you trying to like beef up or are you trying to like get deezed and cut? Well, right now, I'm trying to cut, but the thing is, it's a lot easier just to keep eating and keep getting stronger, so uh, it's been a bit of a vicious cycle. To get stronger, too, like, what are you eating? What's part of your diet? Uh, All whole foods, nothing really in a bag or a box, lots of dairy, milk, cheeses, butters, steaks, eggs, fish, sardines twice a week, uh, raw liver every now and again, bone marrow. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're doing the bone marrow soups and stuff? Yeah, no, not even soup. Oh! Just roast it and take it out the bone. (laughs) because it's straight up like boar it's like Uh, butter man it's good a lot of people there's a a little known vitamin called vitamin k2 and there's a specific um subtype mk7 that you only get from dairy products most people are extremely deficient so that is one thing that's in butter and that's why i eat a lot of it so you've been doing stocks every day now yeah so you just Since, wait. Yeah, December 2019. Some, some, you know, some mornings you want to sleep in. I don't have a, <laughs> a set schedule. Fuck it, I'm sleeping in. Well, that's the know? good thing about doing stocks, right? Yeah. Like you have to report to somebody. But it's all about self-discipline, right? Because you got to wake up and get on it. Your monetary gains are directly related to your performance and your discipline. So, well, my first venture into the stock market was actually in Forex. Um, there's this thing called interest rate decisions when the banks, the central banks of the countries will raise or lower them. And that will cause the currency pair to absolutely fly or to just drop. So I was looking at it like, Hey, I'm going to throw three grand in. And you know, if they raise the interest rates and everything goes up, I'm going to make fucking 40 grand. It'll be great. About 15 seconds later, I was down to about $200. And I'm kind of glad that it went bad because, I mean, three grand is not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. I mean, imagine you get into it with 100000 mm. right? So it sucks, but it was a, a very valuable learning experience. And that was probably about 2017. Have you ever thought about going out, getting vaccinated, and trying to get a job? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no. The only vaccine I'm going to take is from a guy named Chad at the gym, and I'm going to be taking it twice a week, and I'm going to be fucking huge. And that helps with other diseases, too. That, that's even a better vaccine. Yeah. Right? The trend. Yeah. The real yeah. pandemic right now is low-T men and fucking bitches. And horse tranquilizer. For me, it's twofold. I don't need it because I put a lot of time and a lot of effort into refining my diet and my routine. I'm healthy. I don't need anything in my system. There's no long-term information. I mean, you remember seeing ads for drugs when we were kids 20 years later. Now there's class action lawsuits because they fucking killed people. See, this is one thing like I took myself down a fucking rabbit hole here. I do sit at home a lot because, I mean, obviously I'm in the stock market. Some of my days I'm done by 1030. Yeah. I got a lot of time to look things up and research. And I mean, they put all of their research papers out. You can find them on the National Institute of Health. You can find them on a whole bunch of medical journals. Like these are written from the people that are doing the studies. Research papers on the vaccine. Yeah. The National Institute of Health, the British Journal of Medicine, and there's a couple more. Um, I can get the links for you, but off the top of my head, I don't know. That's the beauty of the online world is it's decentralized. You can get direct information right from the source. You don't have to rely on a government funded CNN. Like there was one instance, this guy, uh, he was filming. There was two Australian cops at his door and they were questioning him. Sir, four months ago, we saw online that you posted misinformation about a COVID vaccine. Did you write this? What do you have to say about it? Fucking two cops showed up to the guy's house at one in the morning to question him about what he wrote online. What happened after? 
they ended up walking away because he was getting pissed off. And I mean, I guess legally they don't have any grounds to do anything. Yeah, like, but what the fact remains. Do? Yeah. Right? Your cops showing up at your door. Sir, you said this online. If that happens here, I'm fucked. I'm end up in a gulag. <laughs> I know. And they got a lot of dirt on you and shit. Oh, but yeah. But where do you, like, like on Twitter? Is that where you post? On Mostly on Instagram. Oh, you post on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to shout out your Instagram or not? <laughs> yeah, if people care to follow. Yeah, Instagram yeah. Scruff. S-K-R-U-F-F-F-F-F. At Scruff. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy, too, how, like, strip clubs are mandating the vaccine. Like, you can't enter a strip club without being vaccinated, like at Zanzibar or, like, Whiskey A Go-Go's. And it's like, COVID's the last thing I worry about catching at a strip <laughs> club. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, you could get herpes just from drinking a beer there, you know what I mean? They're doing the social distancing there? <laughs> yeah. No. So it's like you get a lap dance from the, across the room. You're oh. like, yeah, baby. This air feels dope. Yeah. I can smell you from there, baby. Oh, man. That is fucking pathetic. I wonder if the strippers are vaccinated. I don't know. What about going to grocery stores? Uh, Are you wearing your mask in the grocery store? Hell no. I don't wear it anywhere. (laughs) I don't don't own one and I haven't worn one in two years. I just walk in like I own the goddamn building. That's why I love you, man. Because you got balls. Like, Like when we went into Buffalo Wild Wing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we sat down at the table with no masks on and then all of a sudden the waitress comes up to the table and says did you guys sign in sign in this is fucking buffalo wild wing yeah. bar what do you sign in is this daycare yeah give me a beer and a pound of fucking wings let's go <laughs> in my opinion this is the true pandemic is unhealthy lifestyles and most people are extremely deficient in most vitamins and most minerals and with the beef liver you're getting a ton of vitamin A, all seven B vitamins. You're getting vitamin C, vitamin E, all kinds of minerals. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not eating it. Because I saw a couple of videos of you eating raw liver. Yeah. And, you know, I love liver too, but I've never eaten it raw. How did it taste? Honestly, I covered it in maple syrup and pink Himalayan salt, and it was pretty good. Sweet and salty and not much liver taste. Can't complain. Now, would you rather cook it or would you eat it raw all the time? Honestly, I'd rather eat it raw. Okay. Yeah. The only problem is I got liver from my one source now and they actually vaccinate their cows. This is another rabbit hole you can go down. But if you look at the list of improved ingredients for vaccines, none of that shit's good for you. I don't care what they say. Formaldehyde, mercury, aluminum, polysorbate 80, aborted fetal cells, monkey kidney cells. I mean, that shit's fucking witchcraft. It's not good for you. And this is what they're pumping into the cows. I don't know exactly what they're giving to the cows, but I would assume if that's safe for humans, that and much worse is safe for the animals. Yeah, and uh, the bone marrow is where the toxins are stored. So the source that I got is potentially a contaminated source. So I've been cooking this stuff. But now you're switching, you're trying to switch to an organic source? Yeah, I found a new source, grass-fed, no steroids, no hormones, no vaccines, and... Once I'm out of my current supply, yeah, I'll be eating it raw again. Yeah, I know one thing that made me do it is um, cooked meat doesn't fully break down in your stomach because it gets that like oxidized barrier from when you're eating it and raw meat fully breaks down in your stomach. So it's much more efficient for your body to process. Our our pH in our stomach as well is also really low. It's in between one and two for the most part, which is in range with scavengers. So we're able to take on a pathogenic load. So it's, it's not really dangerous. But you're also eating sweet fruits and seed oils. Yeah, so right? I actually I actually cut out most vegetables. Again, with the beef liver and the bone marrow, there's so much vitamins and minerals in it. You don't really need to eat the vegetables. The only thing that you're deficient in is vitamin C, which is why I eat the sweet fruits. Okay, so the oranges. Uh, what else is high in vitamin C here? Uh, pomegranate. Yeah, pomegranate's really good. Uh, mostly oranges, oranges and blueberries. And blueberries, okay. Blackberries too, right? Or okay? I would. I just prefer blueberries. Okay. Yeah, they're far more antioxidants and nutrients mm-hmm. in them. Like strawberries are pretty much pure sugar. There's almost no nutritional value in them. Okay. Yeah, no, I think the body's got a great capacity to heal. I mean, we were taught in biology that your cells every like couple of weeks or every three weeks, they die off and regrow. Mm. So to me, that means by definition, your body is constantly healing. Although that's why they say Donald Trump was so preserved. 
Because he ate fucking McDonald's Big Macs like every yeah. day. <laughs> the only thing that I'll eat is asparagus and carrots and then potatoes for carbs. Okay. So you need the carbohydrates in there. No pasta, eh? No. No. I've considered making my own, but... Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't feel like fucking doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the thin, like, spaghettini, like, number 12, you know, and number 11 spaghettini, yeah. you know what I mean? I love farfalle, too, or, like, um, I know you probably don't know what these are. No, you're speaking gibberish yeah, to me. Yeah, farfalle, or, like, the, the styles of pasta. The penne, you can't go wrong with penne. Yeah. To me, pasta's pasta's pasta. It's all the same shit. I prefer white pasta, like, oil, oil pasta, uh, over the tomato sauce. White pasta, just, like, with tuna, like, good tuna in it. Just throw some fish in there. Mm-hmm. Like on uh, Christmas, we usually do like a white pasta with like uh, some shrimp, scallops and stuff. We'll throw all fish in there, right? Yeah, sounds good. Are you cooking for your family too or just you? Occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's good. You're a good family man, you know? Try to be. And then soon you can eventually start cooking for your chick. Yeah, assuming I find one that's unvaxxed. Are you, have you been on Tinder, any of the dating apps and stuff? No. <laughs> no, I've considered yeah. it just to mess around and have some fun with those chicks. <laughs> you know, they think they're vaxxed and they're cool and everything. Just, you know, make a fake profile, swipe on them and fuck with them. <laughs> yeah, baby, you want to chill tonight and get like double vaxxed? <laughs> you know? We'll jab each other. You want a vaxxed man, you might as well be looking for another wife. <laughs> I'm going to jab you so hard with that needle. <laughs> That's why if there's one thing that people would take away from listening to this podcast, I would say exercise, get sunlight, change your diet, work on yourself, and uh, try and become a god among lesser men. Exactly, because if you don't have big calves, then what the fuck are you doing? I'm your host, Ricky Slapstick. Thank you, Chris, for coming on this show. You were very entertaining, and you were a good friend of mine, and we hope to have you back on the show. Yeah, anytime. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Ciao.